Every morning I watch a little bit of uh, Squawk on the Street with Jim Cramer and David Faber and Carl Cantania. And this morning Jim was going on about the earnings report by Procter & Gamble. And he shared that Procter & Gamble has been a part of his charitable remainder trust for years. And what a strong and, and consistent company it is. And so so I picked up my phone and I asked, what was the increase in revenue for uh, Procter & Gamble in 2023? And they told me it was 2.7%. What? 2.7? You can't stay alive growing your revenue only at 2.7%. But Jim said it was a it was a good, strong stock. And so I decided what I wanted to do is take my good, strong stock that I think is going to give me phenomenal returns over the next two years, and I wanted to analyze it and compare it to Jim's uh, Procter & Gamble. Now, I respect Jim because Jim is pulling down millions. Jim is one of the best paid people in the financial world, so I have to respect him because they aren't paying me the five million or the fifteen million or whatever they're paying him. So I have to respect him. But I have to question why are you dealing in a stock? Now again, it's a dividend stock, okay. But they're only growing their revenues at 2.7%. I don't see how they stay in business like that. But that's here nor there. What I want to do is then I came down to my office and I immediately went into my analysis. I, I, I have analyzed now somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 stocks. And what I do is I compare their growth in earnings per share, their growth in stock price, and, and their growth in revenues, and then say, how does that relate to their increase in their stock price? Here, I'll walk you through it with Jim's favorite stock, Procter & Gamble, and my favorite stock, Soundhound. And if you don't know what Soundhound is, watch my video yesterday, and I'll tell you how it's going to change my life. Nita and I are going on a, on a road trip, and we're going to take Soundhound with us, and then I'm going to take it and become a doctor. Doctor. Yeah, and maybe a lawyer. Right. Maybe I'll even get hired by CNBC for $5 million a year. Let's take a look at my analysis. This is the analysis process that I have built uh, for my tribe to analyze the performance of a stock based on past performance and future projections. And I've built an algorithm to give me some guidance as to what I can expect from a stock. So this is an analysis of Jim Cramer's uh, PPG, Procter & Gamble, and my Soundhound. I should say my and Jensen's, because Jensen's in this with me as well. So what I've done, I'll just walk you through it, is I, I look at earnings per share, I look at past price performance, and uh, then project in the future, and then I look at past revenue performance. And I've done that both for Soundhound and earnings per share. And you'll immediately notice that I don't have any numbers on Soundhound until 2019, whereas I have numbers all the way back to 2009 on Procter & Gamble. And what I've done is taken each year and shown what the earnings per share were on Procter & Gamble. And as you can see, and then I show up here the percentage of change. As you can see in 14, their earnings per share dropped from uh, $4.19 to $2.50. And that represents a 40% um, decline and then came back with a 52 and a 53% increase and a 35% decrease. So then what I do is I say, okay, this is the percentage change. What is the average change for that period of time? And so it is a positive 15.9%. I then put the same analysis to the price of the stock. So Procter & Gamble went up 1% in 2009, 9% in 2010. And so I get an average um, return or increase in stock value of 4.4% over the same period of time that their earnings went up 15.9%. So what I can say is for every 15.9% increase in um, earnings per share, the stock price will yield me a 4.4% uh, price increase in the value of the stock. Okay, so that ratio then becomes 28%. A 28% gain in the price of stock based on uh, the 15.9% 
comparison. Okay, then what I have down here is their growth of revenues. And you can see they, they don't grow revenues extraordinarily. Uh, even in uh, during the pandemic, when I would have thought they would have grown dramatically, they, they went from three, one, five, seven, then back to five, two. So their revenues don't change uh, for the most part. And the average revenue change for from 09 through the projection of 26 is less than 1%. Now I come up here and I look at SoundHound. And SoundHound is a company that I like um, because I first was put on to it by Jensen Hong of, of, um, of NVIDIA. NVIDIA and, uh, and you can see it's not a profitable stock as you look at it, their earnings per share, but their, their, their earnings per share are going up consistently and they're projecting probably in 2027 they'll, they'll go positive. Then what I'm showing you is again the movement in the price. And you can see as the price goes up or there, as the earnings go up 35%, the price of the stock goes up 71%. Well, that's pretty strong. And then what really turned me on to this stock was the increase in their revenues from, I, and this is, this is ridiculous. Look at this, 69, 63, 40, and, and compare that to what you get out of an established stock. Now, if you watch the video I did, where I showed in the the um, thumbnail a picture of Jensen, Charles, and Elon. This is the same pattern I saw in in their three stocks when they were new, when they were growing. They they grew leaps and bounds in revenues, and their earnings per share became more and more positive. So I I look at that and I say this Soundhound is another. Uh, NVIDIA, a new, another super micro, macro, and, and another Tesla. They have the same pattern. So what I then said was, okay, today you and I both invest $10,000 and you take your choice. Uh, you go with Jim, and as he says, this has been in his charitable trust forever and it is a mainstay. I question why, but that is where he puts his money. And he's going to get a increase uh, current price is uh, 155, and based on the increase in 2005, that he's going to get of 7.8 percent in um, in earnings, he is going to yield a two percent gain in price on Procter and Gamble in uh, 2025, and then 2026, he'll get another 2%. Now he's gonna get a dividend, but that's it. So his $10,000 invested today at $55.89 is going to turn into, on January the 2nd, 2027, to $10,438.65 plus his two years of dividend. On the other hand, if my analysis is correct, and again, I want to emphasize, I built this scenario off of the uh, analysis of uh, Tesla, Super uh, Macro Computer, and uh, NVIDIA, my 10,000 is going to turn into $30,000. That's how I analyze stocks. Now, Jim and I's situations are very different. Jim is gathers a, I would guess, somewhere in the neighborhood of a million to two million dollar annual salary. Um, I would guess he's somewhere in his mid-60s. I'm approaching 80. Um, I have a nest egg that I put aside. I would say I have a higher risk tolerance than, than Jim. And I would bet Jim doesn't do this kind of analysis. He doesn't look deep under the rug and say, what is the basis? What has to happen for Procter & Gamble to, to gain 61% uh, in their earning or in their price in, in uh, 2025 and then followed up with another 87% in uh, 2026. What does Procter & Gamble have to do to do that? Well, they got to invent some revolutionary product that I can buy and, and wash my clothes and have them so much better or something that uh, I can maybe eat. I don't know what Procter & Gamble would have to do to get that kind of return over the next two years. So in my way of investing, why would I put $10,000 
that would turn into 10,438 as opposed to turn into 30,000. Now, you might say, yeah, but the risk is much higher up here than down there. Is it really? Do you know what SoundHound does? Do you? Do you know what they are creating? Watch my video yesterday and let me tell you about my trip from Birmingham to Vicksburg to Minneapolis and what is going to happen in my new BMW as a result of SoundHound. Well, listen to, to my video yesterday and let me tell you what's going to happen when in 2028, when what, I'm, I'm going to be 81, 82 years old, I'm going to go sit for the bar exam and get my legal license. License, and then two months later, I'm going to go sit for my doctor's license to be a neurosurgeon, and Soundtown's going to be there with me. Procter Gamble won't be. I doubt if Jim Cramer will be, but Soundhound will. And that's why I'm confident on January the 2nd, 2027, my $10,000 will turn into $30,000 or more. Because after all, it's going to make me a doctor. Heck, I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll t even teach me how to shoot three-pointers. Huh? What do you think? An 82-year-old three-pointer shooter. That's how I analyze stocks. This is what we do at Best of Us Investors. We take the data, and that's all this is, we take the data that is available to us because we know where to get it. Oh, Goldman Sachs has been doing this for years. Now, they probably aren't investing in SoundHound because it's not on the S&P 500. It's, it's considered a penny stock. Um, so they're probably not in it, but that doesn't restrict me. I know what they do. I was in that industry for 20 years. I know what they do. They have, what is it? They have, uh, what, 46,300 people working for them, Goldman Sachs. They manage $2 trillion. I don't know why they haven't hired me yet, but, and what I really don't know is why is Jim Cramer on CNBC, making several million dollars a year, and I'm not. What am I missing here? Show up at my uh, Stock Talk meeting. Well, actually, this is I'm shooting this on Friday, and it's this afternoon. And we're going to talk specifically in detail about just this analysis and what I'm doing and how I want to build a community of 10,000 strong who are paying me, and I want to go hire some of Goldman Sachs' analysts to come work for us, best of us investors. That's my goal. I don't want to hire somebody that I got to teach what I know. I want to hire somebody who's going to come and teach me more about what I don't know. Okay, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I did not work for Goldman Sachs. I worked for American Express, which is now Ameriprise. It was actually IDS up in Minneapolis, Minnesota when I started. But that was my background. I've come a long way. I think I figured it out. You let me know what you think. Do this. Go into the description and tell me, which do you want to buy? Soundhound or Procter & Gamble? Jim Cramer? or Kerry Grinkmeyer. Talk to you again tomorrow.